In this video we're going to look at meiosis. There are three different ways that I'll show it to you just to hopefully make it as clear as possible because it has a lot of similarities to mitosis but it has important differences that um, sometimes you can kind of miss if you're just looking at it from one angle I find with this. So meiosis gets broken down into two stages. Uh, we've got meiosis 1 which is where genetic diversity gets introduced which is totally different to mitosis and the second stage is reasonably similar to mitosis. So that's called meiosis too. Um, before this takes place, there is DNA synthesis, just like mitosis. Um, so each chromosome is double-stranded. It gets checked for the errors before the nuclear division begins. We'll look at issues arising from uh, meiosis and from mutations that might appear uh, later. But that is something that they try. Well, that is tried to be prevented here at this point. Meiosis 1 then, the process starts the same as mitosis, but the cell's genetic material gets divided up in a different way. So as you would expect from before, the chromatin condenses, nuclear membrane disappears, similar to mitosis, um, and these chromatids are joined at their centromeres. If you're not sure of any of these key words, we'll try and explain most of them as we go, um, but it's definitely worth a bit of revision from mitosis because there's a lot of overlap. Okay, so this is where we've got meiosis 1 and there's a big difference between mitosis. So this is called independent assortment and we'll look at this on the next image uh, to make it as clear as possible. But basically the spindle fibers are going to sort the chromosomes out into their homologous pairs. Now the arrangement of it just determines how they end up ultimately being divided between daughter cells. So visually what this means is the homologous chromosomes get lined up along the, the middle of the cell. However, they get lined up in terms of their homologous chromosomes not completely independently ready to be separated out into the chromatids um, I'll show you that on the other picture that might make it more obvious but this is one of the key differences between mitosis and meiosis Another difference is when they are lined up like this, um, they exchange information between each other and I'll be doing, uh, well, be looking at this separately in more detail. This is called crossing over. So um, it means they exchange small portions of genetic material. So that means that these chromatids now becomes totally unique. So you can get hair color from your dad, but it doesn't mean you're gonna get the same colors as eyes, okay? Because this, um, I mean, if we're being super reductive and we're talking about one chromatid carrying all that information, just an example, that would be one of the reasons why that wouldn't be the case, um, forgetting that they might be on different chromosomes. And there's just two here, obviously, to make it as clear and simple as possible. So the end of meiosis one then is the nucleus dividing, creating two different, uh, so creating two daughter nuclei and the cells separate. Uh, each cell is haploid, but each chromosome still consists of these two unique chromatids at this point. So again, difference between this and mitosis. Meiosis 2 in a concept is similar to mitosis then. So it involves the separation of the chromatids and a final phase of cytokinesis. And you can see in this process, if we just jump back and, and rewatch the animation, it's visually similar to what we would have seen in mitosis. You can see that the, centri the spindle forms and pulls the chromatids apart at the centromere. So you can tell the difference between um, meiosis 1 and mitosis looking at that. We end up with four unique haploid gametes. And we can see here where the crossing over is introduced, uh, genetic diversity, as well as this independent assortment process too. Uh, we'll look at independent assortment and crossing over in more detail later. A second visual, which is the same process, but might help you um, if you're struggling to visualize some aspects of it because it's quite a simplistic animation. Um, I've pointed out a few of the key points on this one. So we've got meiosis 1 and we've got meiosis 2. So um, this is one of the key the key differences. You can see that if you like look at a diagram now of mitosis, you'll find that they would line up similar to metaphase two over in meiosis two, and they would be pulled apart at their um, pulled apart at the centromere, and you'd see the chromatids being pulled across. However, instead of that happening in metaphase one, what actually happens is all the chromosomes pair up along the midline. Um, with the homologous chromosomes pairing up next to each other. So that means you're going to end up, instead of splitting the chromatids at the centromere, they now get essentially moved along the spindle fibers to the opposite poles and you retain them like this. Okay, so um, we talked about this in the animation. If we move over to meiosis 2, 
um, it's really obvious here that there's no additional replication. So there's no, between this phase, it's not like mitosis, there's no DNA replication at this point. It's literally the same as the resultant from meiosis one. And then mechanically, I guess you could call it mechanically. So in terms of a process, it's the same as mitosis. They line up along the center. They get pulled apart at the centromere and migrate to opposite poles. And then at the end, they pinch in and divide again. So the outcome of that is instead of them having the full complement of DNA, because here the, it's 2N, 2N, it's now been separated again. So we've now got separate individual cells that are haploid. Another visual that might be useful, I think this is the Encyclopedia Britannica, again shows you similar to what I just uh, pointed out. Um, it might be more useful to have a look at as much information as possible. So that's here. Um, I'm not going to go into much detail with this because it's the same as what I've just described. But again, we've got the visual where we can see that these actual, um, we can actually see that they're being pulled apart. These bivalents, uh, which is a term for the homologous pairs, are being pulled apart to the opposite sides. And then we can then see that at this stage, it's functionally similar to mitosis.